Hey, AG Squared here. I'm on my way to a property that uh, myself and my business partners just went under contract. And today is the day where I'm going to have my inspector take a look and make sure that there's nothing uh, that I may have missed that could be a risk for us to buy it. Uh, so like I like to say, no surprises by the time you actually go uh, through closing. Now, once I get there, I'm actually going to do, I'm gonna let my inspector do his thing, not get in his way, but I wanna spend some time and actually record uh, how I go and do my own preliminary inspection even before I put out an offer. Uh, I'll share with you some of the really important things that anyone can keep an eye out when you're house shopping, uh, house window shopping, or when you're looking for rental properties to uh, add to your portfolio. Uh, and again, some of these things are really easy that anyone can look at. It's just a matter of knowing what to look for and it could save you a lot of money, a lot of time moving forward, uh, especially since inspections can cost upwards to 500 plus dollars. Uh, sure, you might be able to find a good deal, but they are expensive. It's a lot of time crunch. Uh, and if you can avoid that by spawning uh, critical red flags, you, don't, you can save yourself some time and some money. So stick around. We will, once I get to the property, I will show you uh, what I look for. All right, we are about one mile, two minutes away from the property, according to Google Maps here. Um, and as I'm driving there, a couple things. So this was the first time I was looking at this house. Some things to really keep in mind is take a look at what's nearby the house. Shopping, groceries, entertainment, uh, proximity to highways, proximity to schools, what school district you're getting into. These are the very first things that you're going to want to keep an eye on when buying your home or when looking into rental uh, properties because you're going to want to make sure that if you're renting that it's going to be in a good area where people are going to want to rent from you and if you're buying a house it has to fit your lifestyle you know in terms of your commuting to work um you know how much traffic is there uh, or if you've got family you know what precise nearby to grocery stores and things of that nature so now i'm actually pulling into the neighborhood Another important thing to look at when buying your home and on a rental property is what does the neighborhood look like? You know, just take a look. How clean is it? Uh, how well maintained are the homes? Uh, a lot of people like to say online, take a look at what cars uh, people have outside and nearby in the, the surrounding homes. You know, all of that is data. I don't, I don't necessarily keep all that uh, and take it for gospel, but uh, it is worthwhile. I mean, you know, really important thing is. Is this a neighborhood that you would be comfortable living in uh, is really the key takeaway. Um, another thing I like to look at here is how deep inside is the house or rental property once you're inside the subdivision. You know, if you have to drive like five minutes once you're inside the subdivision to get really deep into it, that might be a turnoff, right? And you know, no one really wants to spend that much time driving through a neighborhood to get to their house. Uh, here we are at the house already. I'm seeing the inspector already there. So I'm going to pause this video and head up the driveway and uh, start recording and show you all what I look for. Stay tuned. We are at the property. Um, hopefully folks are able to get a good vantage point. So I'm going to start my own inspection. Like I said, my inspector is in there taking a look at everything. But I'm going to share with you the things I really look for whenever I am considering buying a house um, and even prior to even giving an offer. So here I am, I'm on the driveway, uh, facing upward. Very first thing I'm, I like to take a look at is um, just the overall layout of the home. So here we can tell, we can see, we have a very steep incline to the driveway. Uh, this could affect your appreciation because a lot of folks may not really want this steep of a driveway, but um, that's one thing to look at. Another thing I'm noticing here right off the bat is I mean, the front yard is massive at this house. Um, you know, we will probably, we can run a, sur a survey to really see where our lines end, but you can see the house here. And uh, here is our water main shot of valve. So that's really nice that it's really easy to access. Um, but, you know, if we kind of look to the other house, uh, I would not be surprised if our property goes all the way out to probably over here. Um, so massive front yard, a lot of maintenance, probably that's gonna have to be upkeep and uh, another thing to really look at from this distance is there's a lot of trees around the house. And when I get closer, I'm going to want to take a look to see how many of those trees could be leaning towards the house. Um, 
are there any branches that are over the roof that could cause damage and all of those things are going to be items I'm going to want to take into account because uh, they can be quite expensive to address. Um, cool, so let's start going up this driveway. There's a tennis ball there. I'm going to grab that. I like to fidget with things. All right, sweet. Oh, it's broken. All right, I'll throw that out. Okay, let's go up the driveway. This driveway looks to be in pretty good condition. I don't see really severe cracks, which is which is encouraging to see. Starting to look at the trees. Okay. I like that these trees are not, I believe none of them are oak. So oak trees are very well known to fall. And uh, if you have regular trees like these, um, it's a little less of a risk. Big fan of the extended driver here on the driveway on the left. Uh, that could easily allow you to park another vehicle. Uh, an opportunity here is to, you know, put in a fence um, all the way here to give more privacy. And uh, off the bat, another thing to look at here, which will depend on your lifestyle. Immediately we see stairs to the front, to the front door. Uh, that could be, again, limiting to your appreciation because... Uh, not everyone might be able to go upstairs uh, and having to be able to having to do that to enter the house could be a, a pitfall or it could be a downside but uh, overall now that I'm getting a little closer to the house what I'm going to start looking at at this point is overall red flags around water drainage and around anything that could become an entry point for water into the house or for rodents getting into the house so I'm going to really look Close at the siding, close uh, at the areas right underneath the gutters, uh, the, what's called the fascia and the soffits. So basically all the crooks and corners, I want to make sure that there's no entry point where water can get in or rodents can get in. And I also want to look into wherever we have downspouts. So from the gutters, all the water going down the downspouts, I want to make sure that we have that water flowing away from the house. Uh, if you have water on the foundation, that could degrade it and cause more mo movement and potential issues further down the road. So let's just go around. I'm going to just do a quick 360 exterior around here and keep a lookout for things, um, kind of calling them out as I see them. And on this video, I know it'll be hard to see all of them, but like I said, I'll call them out and hopefully that'll help you. So first thing I see is I see some wood carpenter bead damage. Those are not a big issue. You can easily start uh, filling them in and uh, you know, prevent that from becoming an issue later down the road. Um, this actually looks pretty solid. The gutters look pretty new. Downspouts are well attached to the um, to the siding, and we can see here we've got an underground drain system where the water just goes inside here, and they have a tube. You know, you kind of dig through this. You can actually see that connection here. There's that tube right there. And that's, I think, just gonna flow down here and I can see they did a very easy, kind of little lazy way of uh, connecting that to this pipe. And now we've got water flowing away from the foundation. So that's a checkbox, that looks good. And we can see the same thing over here, right? Downspout connects to the gutter, flows down. We got a little bit of rot on this board here. Uh, that could be a concern for me. I'm gonna want to keep an eye on this, potentially even consider replacing it, but um, overall we flow down, connects here, flows away from the house. So that looks good. Um, I'm going to wake my way to the left. So now that I'm here, I'm going to look at the overall structural integrity, make sure that these posts, any post, you do not want it touching actual ground. So obviously this is concrete. And then we've got these posts that are looking good. Make sure that there's not a lot of rot around it. If it doesn't look like it's gonna be structurally sound, you're gonna to want to uh, patch that up or address it. Otherwise it becomes a safety hazard. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. I'm just looking at the boards, making sure there's no rot uh, or uh, cracks that could become a structural issue. And so I'm just continuously looking through all the siding, the boards, the decks. I love this. I actually miss this in my first inspection. A little, a little area here for more storage. It's, uh, it's really nothing impressive though, but uh, kind of nice that that's there. 
Okay, and again, uh, worth noting, folks, I am not an inspector. I am not uh, qualified <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. I am a DIY, a homeowner that over time has gained experience after looking at seven plus inspection reports. So just wanted to share my knowledge to, and hope so it'll help you. So here I'm spying a nest, uh, a hornet's wasp nest. Um, not a big issue. Uh, you know, as you go through this, I will probably end up cleaning a lot of this out, water pressure treatment. Uh, maybe a little bit of spray foam to make sure that they don't come back and uh, create their 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 nest there. Uh, these are important. They're tightly to code. You want to have these covered. Uh, any outlets, and uh, this is good. This is to code anything that's outside or that's close to kitchen sinks faucets. You want them to be GFCI protected, which basically pr cuts, uh, prevents power going through if it detects a surge or if it detects that there's water. And um, I can test that just simply by clicking reset test. And uh, normally I will have a device with me. I actually go and get it in the truck right now and test to see if this has power. So let's go do that, y'all. Let's pause on the inspection. Actually do this right. I think my inspector's gonna do all of this, but before you hire your inspector, I'm gonna show you what tools are quite nifty just to have with you to uh, be able to run this inspection. There's my truck, F-150 Lightning. I love this truck, y'all. It's expensive, but well worth every penny. The nice thing about my truck is I've got space, massive amounts of space in the in the front here. That's where it's going to be. I'm pretty sure the tool I'm looking for is going to be in here in my electrical portion here, but I gotta look for it. Sometimes I keep them in my exterior bags, but I'm not seeing them here, not seeing them here. There it is. This is a stupid thing I was looking for, y'all, after all that work. So this little tool here lets us uh, be able to just connect this to an outlet and gauge um, whether we're getting power and uh, uh, or not through it. So super useful, and you can see push to check GFCI. Uh, that's going to allow me to test that any GFCI-enabled outlet uh, is actually operating the way it's supposed to. So we're going to go ahead and test that out. All right, we're gonna open up this box. Here you go. And I'm just gonna connect it. So we see here, might be a little difficult for y'all. So there we go. We see two lights. That's good. I'm gonna press the button, and there you go. The lights go off. So that means this GFCI is working. And I'm gonna go ahead and press this button to reset. And then we've got power. Um, I like to do that just on both. We got power. So this outlet is working. On to the next one. And again, I'm looking just to see that this window frame, there's no entry points inside for water. We're now we're gonna try this one. So same thing, you can see, not very functional, but it does the trick. Uh, we're gonna continue our exterior, take a look at the siding. So all this here, it's also important to look at. So this here is typically a pipe that's going to be pumping water out of some appliance. Could be your HVAC, typically, and it's just going to pump any water from condensation out through here. So same thing. You're going to want to make sure that this here flows away from the house. And so one opportunity here I see off the bat, based on the discoloration of the siding, is I could probably put some more stone, some more soil all around this side and make sure that all water is flowing away from the house. That's an opportunity to improve. Here you got your gas meter. Always important to take a look at that there's not too much rust here. And uh, they sell at Home Depot appliances to really just prevent rust, coat it around it. This one's actually looking very nice, very clean. Um, a little bit of rust here, which I might address, uh, but it doesn't look too terrible. So there I can actually see they put some um, flashing on the siding on top of that chimney. And so what that tells me is uh, they did some rodent exclusion work here. I'm a little bit concerned that there's that much flashing though. That tells me maybe the siding is really damaged up there. And I can even tell that the fascia board is a little loose, but uh, all in all, not terrible. They definitely did have rodent exclusion. I can see you've got mesh wire around the portion of where the attic uh, gets air through it so it doesn't just simply overheat up there. So that's encouraging in this house. So here we 
have another gutter and downspout. Uh, looks well attached, but water's just gonna sell here. So I'll probably, what I would encourage here before I have tenants or before I move in, is just buy an extension to get the water flowing away from the house downward. And you can see I even got the pipe for that. So I'll probably reuse that pipe, reconnect it here. If it's not uh, serrated, so if it doesn't have holes, I'll reuse that puppy and connect it here. Okay, um, let's take a look at above the trees. So like I said earlier, trees, very important. I've got this tree here and the other tree around it, they've got branches right over this house. So I'm gonna wanna more than likely either remove this tree entirely and each tree depending on size could go from 600 plus dollars per tree removal, right? All the way up to maybe a thousand if they're big trees and if you want stump, the stump to be grinded. Um, but you can also simply hire them to cut off the branches, which is less expensive, especially if the tree looks healthy, which you would want to get an arborist to take a look at, uh, make sure that the trees are healthy. Okay, so we've got those branches, but really I see a lot of leaves here. So I'm gonna probably, and this is, I love these type of gutters when they're really easy to get to because you can put a gutter, a gutter guard all through them and prevent the leaves and the uh, pine straw and twigs and all this stuff from clogging up your pipe, uh, your gutters. So um, I'll, this definitely needs some gutter cleaning, easy to do as well, or easy to hire. Um, a lot of these trees are leaning towards the house. So um, I see one that's leaning, two, three, four. Uh, I see about four trees that are gonna make me nervous. Uh, a couple other one over there. So I'm definitely gonna need to get an arborist out here. Uh, take a look at the health of these trees. Take a look at the foundation, make sure that there's no chance of any of these trees falling on the house. Okay, uh, let's see. Same thing, I'm looking here at this point. I mean, this window frame, I'm gonna get a little closer to that, but I'm seeing that this window frame has a very poor job at insulating it, and um, I'm gonna wanna make sure that that uh, is properly sealed to you know, have energy efficiency in the house and also no water entry points. Just kind of walking around. Off the bat, I'm seeing a lot of boards that were replaced. Uh, so this entire deck, I mean, it doesn't look unsafe. It's not very high off the ground, uh, but you can really just tell that it, it, it needs some love. There's my truck again. Uh, so this part of the siding, you know, you're, you're seeing a lot of damage here. Uh, you know, you can kind of see these pots where like they're just simply putting in some expansion foam uh, here, over there, and over there, and over there. Um, but none of them really, I think, are concerning me. Uh, they're just simply not well done. They don't look pretty. So that's okay and then we've got another downspout stairs look good and uh, that one uh, doesn't have a huge extension but you know the water will definitely flow away so um, that kind of concludes the exterior overview of what I'm looking for here um, here is another uh, faucet um, I'm so close to the truck let me get my tool to gauge the water pressure uh, on these faucets and you're going to want that water pressure to be depending on your area uh, to be applicable to code uh, in this neck of the woods um, it's anywhere between 65 psi all the way up to 85 i believe uh, the inspector will definitely be able to confirm that so time to just gauge what the water pressure is here you can see it's so easy you just connect it Screw it in and um, we'll be able to get a reading here. Open up the water. So off the bat, I'm getting a reading that looks to be about 110. So too much water pressure. Um, and uh, we're gonna want to take a look at where the PRV is, pressure regulator valve, and uh, address that. So my inspector just opened up the garage. We'll let him take a look more at that. And uh, we'll just continue our overview here. AC unit, yeah, just take a look that it's well grounded. You wanna make sure that it's not just on the ground. Most of these are gonna have a little container, plastic or concrete uh, that keeps them level. Um, a little bit concerning about this one that I worked with is it is quite wobbly. So it may not be very stable. We're gonna ask the inspector about that later. And uh, I can tell this is already a very new appliance, so I'm not concerned about that. All right, onward to the interior. Actually, I've got an outlet out here. I'm gonna also check. Oops, so same thing as before, GFCI, very good. We're gonna connect that in there. And 
it's this one's really difficult for y'all because this is in the way but this one lit up it does engage once i test the reset and uh, that one's working as expected uh, it looks like we had a telephone bell south outlet which i will ignore because uh, i'm not going to be using that okay folks that is the exterior overview of what i look for water entry points trees i haven't looked at the ceiling i don't really have a good vantage point but your inspector is going to definitely want to take a look at the ceiling make sure there's no shady patch jobs you've got the right flashing that the uh shingles are not worn out um and make sure that that is one of the most important things in a house between foundation and your ceiling your roof uh, those are the top things to really hone in on let's go inside um always like to take a look at some of the insulation around here this one really doesn't have great insulation so that needs to be addressed uh, so my inspector's doing what he's supposed to. he's running all appliances so i'm hearing the dishwasher run I'm sure he's around every single appliance. He needs to turn on the stove, make sure that turns on, the gas is good. Uh, microwave works, microwave, uh, fridge works, ice maker works. Run the faucets and sinks, make sure they're working. Run your uh, garbage disposal, make sure that that's working. And um, make sure there's no leaks either. All of these P-traps, all these pipes, don't, you don't want water to be anywhere. And so uh, normally he would be running this water checking for leaks and i've already done that as well in the past so same thing here because it's a kitchen um I, by the way i just noticed that this is laminate they uh they they like to do this for cheap houses um you know you've got laminate you no know, not granite or or uh, or uh quartz and uh, they make it look like it's granite all right so we're in a kitchen so this needs to be gfci compliant i see power on i'll press my button you hear it powers off works press the reset comes back on so this is a well installed gfci outlet we'll come over here do the same thing works press the button good reset works passes our code you're going to want to check all of the lights make sure that this this one probably turns the exterior on and off let me confirm yep this was on before and i just turned it off so that's that one um Let's come over here, test this one. That's the garbage disposal. And then this one turns on the light there. That works. Uh, we've got two lights up here. One there, one there. Let's test this one. See if which one it turns off. So that one turns off that one. And it keeps that one on. I'm not loving that layout. That's really weird. Over here, we've got two. We'll turn one on. So this is a uh, three-way switch. That light is controlled by both the outlet over there and also the outlet over here. Here, I got another one. This one controls just that one. So not a fan. What I'll probably do, team, is I'll probably get rid of this um, and then um, pigtail this cable onto this one, replace this whole thing, have a single one, that, such that it controls now both of these lights that we see here and that one will also do the same um, and again you want to run make sure all your appliances are working uh, and I trust my inspector to do that he's going to run the HVAC system to make sure that we're getting proper AC temperatures and furnace heater temperatures and what I'm doing here team as I'm looking through is I'm looking for cracks indications of settling and movement that are dangerous I'm not seeing anything, I'm not hearing anything. And if I really want to be rigorous, I'd still take this thing and plug it into every single outlet. But listen, after seeing uh, what my inspector's gonna do, I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'm just gonna go through some just to show what I would be doing. Same thing here, I'm looking for any stains, movement, cracks, settling. Nothing really here jumps out at me. One of the things I don't focus on is cosmetics. Obviously, if you're a home buyer, um, that might be more of an important aspect for you, but um, I'm not too concerned about that, and I can do a lot of those improvements. Uh, for the gas, you're going to want to make sure they sell tools like this on my inspector. I'm going to ask them to make sure that this is working and safe and operational, make sure that everything here looks good. Uh, you've got the, you know, the opening here to make sure that the latch opens. I've already tested that. I'm not going to go in and do that again. 
over here, make sure your doorbell is operational. Um, so I've already done that and I heard it, so I'm happy with it. That's what that chime is up there. That's for the doorbell. Uh, so yeah, same thing. I'm looking through any cracks and settling and creaks and sounds to make sure that there's nothing really eye-opening. But uh, overall, this home is in a pretty solid state. I'm not really seeing anything that's a huge concern. And again, cosmetics, like, you know, if these doors were in really good and you know, this one's not sliding well in or opening so um this is i think it's because this was not meant to slide and this was the one that's supposed to slide open. so that one let's get the job done um to code a lot of times you do need these um smoke de uh, fire detectors carbon monoxide smoke detectors as well so that you know that's something to keep an eye on as well from your inspectors that every room has their own and uh, there are Depending on your region or specifications on where your monoxide has to be at. Uh, but there needs to be smoke detectors in every room. So it uh, looks like this one does have them. I mean, I'm looking at them. They're a little old. A little bit of work needs to be done. This door is completely uh, loose and off. So uh, this door would need to be uh, put back on. But overall, another thing to make sure is that every room needs to have windows are functional. So uh, make sure that this lock is off. And I'm gonna try to lift it up and I can't. So my inspectors are gonna probably flag this. This is a safety hazard. The windows do not open. Um, so that's gonna come up and that's gonna have to be addressed by the, as part of our negotiation. That. All right. Once we go into bathrooms, let me turn off the, uh, he's testing the uh, uh, air, 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 air duct. Uh, so same thing, uh, very important here. Bathrooms, GMCI, connect, works, button, loose, reset. Good. Well installed loose. Um, I like to make sure that this is well installed, not wobbly, looks good. Water runs on both. Now I know, keep a lookout for this. When you open up these things, if you see one of these P-traps have what seems to be like a flexible uh, pipe, those are really bad for P-traps. They're going to clog up. They're going to leak. You want full plastic down here, uh, which is what we have. So this one looks solid. I'm looking for any water stains, uh, flooring issues. All of that looks good. Toilet, make sure it is sitting flush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with my legs, get right in between, and then I'm just going to wobble it. This looks pretty good. Um, same thing. I like to lift this up. This looks new to me. I've seen some really, really old ones. So this toilet looks good. Shower. This is really important to look to make sure that there's no potential areas for water to click in and again cause mold or mildew. Um, a lot of these prefabricated ones are really poor. Um, like I would probably recock this because I'm seeing openings and gaps, especially over here, lots of gaps. Um, but you're also going to want to make sure that all of these are properly caulked and um, they look okay. This one's really poor. You can actually see the gap really bad. And they did a terrible job talking this. Like, look at that. That's a huge separation, y'all. That's almost half an inch. Um, and so this was not a well-installed project. They um, have too much pipe extending out. And it's always going to have this separation. So this needs to be fixed. Um, and another thing the inspector is going to do is make sure that our water is draining properly. If it clogs up, it could be an issue with a pipe. It could be an issue with the drain. And snaking a drain is expensive. Your plumbers are going to charge, you know, out for that three hundred plus dollars. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure all that looks good. And I'm not going to run this. I've done it before, so um, I know it's functional. All right, let's go through here. All right, so this is the master bedroom. Same thing. Just looking around. I love looking at corners, making sure that there are no cracks, no signs of settling. Everything looks good. Again, I'm less worried about the cosmetics and more worried about structural damage, water issues, things of that nature. So all of this looks good. Hello. And uh, over here, as before, big important aspects to test your GFCI. That's on, press the button. It's off, reset, back on, looks good. Same thing, make sure this looks good. It's not on tight. Down here, so down here, I'll show you. 
These are the ones I'm talking about. Horrible, horrible, horrible. They will cause leaks. Should be flagged in an inspection report. Should be replaced. Put in with proper, uh, proper pipe. And again, you'd want to test the water. This one I know clogs up. Do you want to know why it clogs up? Probably because of that pipe I just showed you. So uh, that will need to be fixed. Same thing, closet space. Just want to keep a lookout. I get no signs of cracking. And now we go into the bathroom. Same thing, when I look into a bathroom, look at the toilet, make sure it's not wobbly, looks good. The seat's very wobbly, so I'll probably, when I buy the house, if I buy it, I'll tighten these nuts uh, that you see here, right? So all I did was just expose them. They need to be tightened. Uh, I test the toilet, make sure it's flushing well. Window, that it opens well. I already told you for these prefabricated tubs, make sure that there's no access where water can sneak through and you're going to want to make sure that that is sealed um, and same thing you're going to want to test all these three make sure that they work another one very poor job look at that that's just that's just shady work very poor job uh, so that'll have to be fixed uh, caulking there are limitations to how big of a gap can be addressed with caulk uh, so if possible that may need to just be a complete redone and, and there's our fire smoke detector all right things i would look up in the attic that my inspector's probably going to be already doing enough insulation needs to be up there um, i know that there is not enough insulation i looked at that yesterday so that's going to come up as well all right let's go down here so off the bat safety hazard this thing loose um cosmetics you see wall just needs to be fixed a little bit No, we're at. We'll go to the left here. Some cosmetic damage with a door. And this is a finished basement. Um, one thing to keep an eye on all these finished basements, especially with homes with this type of incline, is water will probably get in unless they have a sump pump system like what we got here. Uh, so these things are meant to catch any water that's going underneath the foundation through the underground and then just simply suck up the water, pump it out, and suck it out. So. Uh, this area here I know has already had that worked. Um, I actually saw the quote of how much they paid. I think they paid about $10,000 to install that sucker. Um, obviously here, lots of cosmetic issues, but uh, overall, again, if I look at the structural integrity, looks pretty solid. Um, and a lot of these things can be fixed. And this door is fully independent, its own lock system to the exterior. So this is really nice, again, as a rental it's got your completely locked area uh, locked separate area of the house your own kitchen your own bedroom uh so this is uh, quite promising uh these ones i don't even need to test he's got the uh radon so when you're doing an inspection radon is one of the major causes of lung cancer it's a really easy thing to detect uh and so you're i always strongly encourage always run them um it's usually of anywhere from like 180 up dollars per inspection uh, you can see that these are working. Uh, this is green over here. You're just simply test it. No longer green. Reset it back to green. Same thing. I would test this to run. My inspector's going to do that. But pipes look good. No water damage. And again, these are all things I'm doing before I even hire my inspector to come out. Uh, so I can immediately say not worth even putting an offer or uh, uh, whether I want to proceed or just simply run away. So here's our bedroom. Same thing, uh, drop, this drop ceiling, I mean, it gets the job done. It's not as hard to install, but you know, you, you, you can see an opening there. We'll have to fix and address that. Um, same thing, if these windows don't open, that's a safety hazard. This one is opening. Um, it's got a really loud spring though, so <laughs> um, none of these windows really give me confidence. Uh, that's just dirt, so no mold. Uh, sizable closet. Look at how ugly that looks. Again, cosmetic, not a big issue. We can put up a box wrapping around to make it look nicer. This part here just needs some uh, baseboards, uh, corner mold as well. Uh, and then here we've got our HVAC and furnace. So this could be a bit of an issue because it's right here right next to the bedroom. This will cause noise. Um, just something to consider, right? Uh, as well and then of course there's there's things they look out for this the inspector is going to test it um i just want to make sure it's properly sealed all these ducts and 
vents are, are, are well sealed off. There's no gaps. Uh, but again, I'm not an inspector and, you know, I want to make sure that the gas line is good. Um, and that the, uh, I actually have a video of showing how to troubleshoot your furnace. So check that out if you want to know, uh, how to actually do it yourself and make sure that your, um, uh, your fire, your flame rod is working well and the whole thing's working, but overall, as long as it runs, you'll be good to go. Okay. We've got the last bathroom, same thing. Just make sure there's no cracks. I'm going to turn that off. Um, I mean, this bathroom, I can tell prefabricated, uh, looks okay. Some indications here that it was done pretty with little care, but, um, um, again, as long as it works, it works. And I know that for example, this is why it's important to get an inspection. And that's why I want you to do this before you get the inspector. Test that these work. This doesn't, this, this is just loose. It's, it's broken. So, um, good thing for you to know about that before you get an inspector out. And look at that. Another one of these pieces that needs to be fully replaced. So that needs to be redone. This door can be locked. So that's a nice thing about this. So you just simply lock this and it takes you into the garage. Uh, you want to make sure that the garage works. This is actually quite nice. It's finished. Um, so uh, it's a, you, know, you just want to make sure that this look works well, closes, opens without issue. Um, take a look at your motor. Some of these can be ancient. Um, this one I think looks recently renovated. Um, I'm going to talk to my inspector about this. Let's zoom in. These are things to look at. You can kind of see a crack here. And it just kind of goes all the way down, starting from the top. Um, so that could be an issue. I'm not a structural engineer. I'd want to have someone just to make sure that that's not a concern. Uh, here is your drain pipe. If you've got a clog, you just remove that and it'll just flood everything here and get the water out. So overall, solid garage. Um, water heater, you're going to want to make sure is, you know, it's, it's, it's of age. And once you buy it, just, just drain this puppy. I'll, I'll have a video of how I do that, but, uh, no one really does that, especially if it's a rental property like this. You can see here, they did a patchwork here. So they probably had a leak at some point, forgot to repaint it, but it doesn't look too terrible. Yeah. All right, team. Well, that is a quick, well, right. Quick is subjective, but, uh, those are the things I look at when I am looking through a home originally, um, to recap major things signs of water damage that is the most expensive thing you'll probably ever have to put up with so you really want to make sure that there's no water damage um, you want to make sure your roof is of good quality when the inspector goes up in that attic he'll be able to see are there any moist areas that are indications of water coming through um, second thing is your foundation you're going to want to make sure there's no settling not a lot of cracks not a lot of creaks um, both interior as well as, as well as exterior. Third, again, back to the water, you want to make sure that your entire exterior is well sealed off, that there's no points of entry of water potentially causing rot, mold, or mildew. And then fourth, really easy thing is just buy yourself one of these. Make sure electrically everything's working. No one likes when they buy a house and then their electrical outlets aren't working. Uh, make, make sure to run all your appliances, run all your faucets, uh, a lot of people, when they come in and they're looking through the home, they're not doing that, right? They're focused on, oh, do I like the layout? Do I like the colors? What can I, how can I make it my own? Uh, take the time when you're going through and doing a walkthrough with your realtor to take a look at through, uh, to inspect it the way I did it. You're not going to get a whole picture. You still need an inspection, an inspector, but it's going to give you a good idea. So that's a wrap. That is me going through a home, exterior, interior, and taking a look prior to hiring an inspector. Hope this helps, and if it does, consider subscribing and following me for more content.